Hello, this is Chuck Ridgeway, Automation Technology Manager at Horner. Thanks for joining us for another Tuesday Technical Topic. Today we're going to go hands-on and I'm going to show you how you can exchange Rockwell Logic CPU tags with the Horner OCS. Now Rockwell has the number one position in terms of market share in North America and I believe they're number two worldwide. So there is plenty of occasion where a Horner OCS user would want to have connectivity with a Rockwell system. So the most popular way of connecting a Horner system with a Rockwell system is by implementing something called Ethernet IP IO adapter on the OCS side. So especially if you are an OEM machine builder and you want to have your machines, which are based on a Horner OCS for control, you want those machines to have good Rockwell connectivity so your Rockwell-centric end users can connect to your equipment easily. That's the method that we've covered here before on the channel that is the most popular. Today we're going to cover another method that's called Logix tag exchange and I'm going to go into great detail on that today so you'll know all about how you can set that up. Now before I break down today's topic I do want to mention that we are live today and we're actually live every week even if we have to show a pre-recorded video we're always standing by to answer your questions in the chat section and to see your comments in the chat section and if you're watching on replay we always have people available that will see those you know within a day or two of when of them getting posted. So let's go ahead and dive into today's topic and let's, let me show you how we're breaking that down. We're going to start out with the basics. Uh, what is Logix Tag Exchange and who might use it? We're going to give you the workflow so you can see the steps required to set it up. And then we're going to quickly get into a couple of demonstrations, a detailed demonstration if you're using register-based advanced ladder. And then we're going to spend a couple of minutes showing you the differences if you're setting it up with variable-based advanced ladder. What is Logix Tag Exchange? Well, it's a method of data communications between a Rockwell Logix PLC CPU and a Horner OCS. It's a method you would use if you wanted to exchange tag data for variables that reside within the Logix CPU that are made available by the Logix CPU that the OCS has the ability to read or write or both. And it actually uses Ethernet IP type messaging to accomplish that. This feature is supported by a variety of OCS models, including the Micro OCS X5, the entire RCC series, except for the 6512, the XL series from the XL4 on up, and the entire XL Prime series. Now this means it's not compatible with the XLE or the XLT, nor the Micro OCS series aside from the X5. Who might use Logix Tag Exchange? Well, if you're an automation end user, and in your plant or your facility, you have a mixture of Rockwell equipment, and you have Horner OCS equipment, and you are proficient in both from a programming standpoint, well, then you might use this approach to exchange data between the equipment. Or, if you're an OEM machine builder who happens to be producing a fairly large machine, at least one that happens to have both, Rockwell PLCs and Horner OCS equipment, it might also be a method you could use with your system as well. In order to use this method of data communications though, you absolutely have to have access to the program that's running in the Logix CPU. And that's because in order to set up the communications, you need something called an L5K file. That's a file that is created from RS Logic software through a save as uh, operation. Most of the time when you're saving your file in RS Logic, you're saving an ADU file. But one of the save as options is the L5K file that Seascape will use to get all the information it needs on the tags that are available from the Logic CPU. And then after you have everything set up and running, you get update times approximately every 25 milliseconds or so, so you do get good performance. Now let's talk about the workflow to get everything set up. We always start out in the RS Logic software where you perform or where you create the L5K file. So you go into your normal project in RS Logic. Of course, you save as an ADU file, but then you do a save as to create the L5K file. 
Then there's an optional second step within RS Logics that I recommend, and that is go ahead and perform an export function of your tags as a CSV file. And I believe that's available in the Tools section in RS Logics. Then you leave RS Logics and you head over to Seascape. So in the Seascape software, you're going to import the L5K file. And as part of that process, you're actually going to be able to browse and select the tags that you want to map over into OCS register space or OCS variable space. And then as a final optional step, but again, one that I recommend, you can use either a, a spreadsheet or a text editor to take the data from within that CSV file you exported in RS Logics to help you kind of create or import the variable names or IO names that you'll need to use within Seascape for the data that you're exchanging with the Rockwell CPU because those names don't come over to the OCS registers or the OCS variables automatically. So this is the workflow. Now let's go ahead and dive right into a demonstration of this method. Now I'm going to show you first how to set up Logics Tag Exchange if you're using register-based logic. And this is a demonstration I recorded earlier today. Hopefully it will give you the information that you need. Before we can import Logics Tags into Seascape, we're going to need to create an L5K file from RS Logics that can be imported into Seascape. So to do that, you can see here I've got my project with my logic, all my tags, and all that sort of thing. So this is the program actually running live in the Compact Logics controller. So I'm going to go ahead and do a file save as to create the L5K file. L5K is one of my choices here. And I can just hit save. There we go. So I've created that L5K file that I will later import into Seascape. Now I like to take an extra step here, and that is I like to export just the tag names themselves into a CSV file. And that is because that can be used later to help me create IO names inside of Seascape for any tags that I choose to map into local OCS register space. Because when I do that, when I take those tags and map them into local OCS register space, those local OCS registers don't by default have a name. So to create those, typically I want them to have the same name as the tag that was imported or that they're tied to. That's why I like to use that CSV file to help me accomplish that. Because I could have a couple hundred tags and doing something more kind of automatically or semi-automatically from a file is going to be more accurate than just creating them all from scratch. So I'm going to go to the Tools section of RS Logics, hit Export, and when I export Tags and Logic Comments, that's where you can see here I'm exporting a CSV file of my tags. All right, let's start the process by going to the Program menu and we'll select Import Tags from L5K File. So now what we want to do is we want to Import Device. And that's where we find the L5K file that we previously exported from RS Logics. And the name that was captured of that CPU comes through. The IP address is set to some default, and let's go ahead and fix that. So in my system, that's 192.168.0.10. Now, one thing about the name. This name came through, but it's actually too long for Seascape. Seascape wants a descriptive name of 12 characters or less. So I'm going to change the name here just to Rockwell. Now we're ready to import tags. So I can expand the Rockwell controller and we have two groups of tags, controller tags and main program tags and we can bring over just the tags that we want. Alright, so I'm going to do that now. 
For my controller tags, I'm interested in auto mode. I'll highlight that one and add it. I'm interested in e-stop. I'm interested in pump run. On the main program side, I'm interested in, let's see here, the offset point, the onset point, and the tank level in feet. So those are the six tags I'm going to import for this demonstration here. Now, the order in which they're going to be mapped into OCS register space is going to be alphabetical order, and we don't have control over that. Now, I have selected R1001 as the starting point for each of these tags to be mapped. And so they'll be tagged in that consecutive area of memory. Now, anything, any tag that's one bit long will be stored in an entire register. So the lower bit of the register will store any Boolean tag. Any tag that's an integer long or 16 bits long will also be stored in a single register as well. Any tag that is double integer or float 32 bits long will be stored in two consecutive registers. Now, it just so happens that none of these tags are double integers or floats, okay? So I'm not gonna be importing any of those today. If I were, they would take up two consecutive registers. When I hit okay here, it's going to give me a notice that the tags are going to be mapped in alphabetical order. Not the order in which I selected them, but in alphabetical order. So if we take a look at these six tags, we can see that these tags, even though it doesn't show up over here, have a prefix which makes them all be sorted in the P's, right? So the order we're going to be that these are going to be brought in is going to be auto mode, e stop, then these three tags, and then finally the pump run. So that's just something for us to be aware of there. All right, and actually, if we go back in to the program import tags area, you'll see that Cscape has alphabetized them. So this shows us the actual order in which they uh, have been imported. All right, now we can also take a look at what was called the scan list for the tags that we've imported. And this shows us register by register what tag on the Rockwell side has been mapped into our application. For the next part of our demo, I'm going to go ahead and work on building the I.O. names for our imported tag. In our demo, I've just imported six tags, so I could very easily go into the I.O. names editor here under program I.O. names, and I could just add six of those in manually, and that would be perfectly fine. But if you've got a couple hundred tags that you're importing, you don't necessarily want to create those all manually you'd prefer to import them if you could. So and if you remember correctly, we exported the tags from the Logix program in an earlier step. So that file is available to us. So I've got it here in Excel. So let's go ahead and fire that up. So this is what that spreadsheet looks like, that CSV file looks like as we exported it from my project. So I've got my controller tags at the top, and then I've got all my main program tags down here. We did import them in alphabetical order, so that will come into play later. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new sheet on this file, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the format that is normally used when you're importing IO names into Seascape. So it starts off with the address, then the size, you know, one bit, 16 bit, 32 bit, then the name, which is the IO name, and then a comment, and that's optional, but we'll go ahead and use that here. All right, let's go ahead and gather up the tags that we want to convert into IO names. So let's go up here to the top and find these 
three. They happen to be right in an order here. And then we're going to grab also the uh, column that tells us about the size of these. And, and I know that these are all one bit variables, but if I had a couple hundred, I wouldn't necessarily want to have to remember the size of each of the variables. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, bring it over here to a area I can just paste it. All right, and then go back and gather my other three tags that I have here. I've got my offset point. All right. And I'll separate them down here because they are part of a different group. All right, they are part of my program tags. And then at the bottom, I've got my tank level in feet that I'll copy. And again, for six tags, it's not that big a deal. For a couple hundred, you would want to be doing something like this. So let's go ahead and put these in order. Because if you remember correctly, we decided to map them all starting at R1001. And remember, for every bit type or word type tag, they're going to take up a full 16-bit register. If we had any double integer or float types, they would take up two consecutive ones. These all happen to be basically integer and bit type. All right, so we're not going to be taking up two registers with any of these tags. All right, let's go ahead and populate the six consecutive registers in our example here that are going to be imported. All right, let's move our, let's make our name a little bit bigger, that column. Let's go ahead and get these in the right order. Remember, these are part of our program tag, so they all, when they're imported, they all have a PR prefix on them or, you know, a long prefix that starts with PR. So these first two are going first, followed by these three, and then finally followed by this one, because again, these will start with PR as they were imported, and this one has a PU. So we'll put that here. From a comment standpoint, we don't have to put any kind of comment if we don't. You know, it's an optional field, but we'll go ahead and just put imported from Rockwell here as a comment. And comments can contain spaces and they can be identical. They don't have to be unique. So I just went ahead and added that there. Now let's talk about size. These three are actually bit type and these three are actually word type. But remember when we imported them, they import into a full word. So for now, Let's go ahead and make these 16-bit in size because they're imported into a full word. So we're going to import them all as 16-bit variables to start. And you'll see the method of my madness later. Now, there's a bug in Seascape where it doesn't import the last one in the list. So we're going to add another one to the list. So I'm just going to add good old faithful always on so that even if Seascape eventually fixes this bug, if it gets imported, it's no big deal. All right, so to actually do the import, what we do is we don't highlight this header that I created, but we just highlight that piece of data right there. Okay, right click and say copy. And then we go back into Seascape, go back to program IO names and we hit the paste button. It says, are you sure you want to paste these IO names and overwrite any duplicates? Yes, I do. And there they are. Okay, they showed up, great. The last step, I need to hit OK. Let's go ahead and take a look and double check our work. So I'm going to go back into Program, Import Tags, and I'm going to click the Protocol Scan List and let's see if we got these right. So this is a good way to double check our work. And we can see here, auto mode, auto mode, e-stop, e-stop, offset point, onset point, take level feet, pump run. So we got them in the right order. So that's an important step to make sure we've imported them properly. Now I'm going to do another step. And that is, I'm going to 
change the six the the actual tags that were one bit variables. I'm going to change them to one bit so that when I go to use them in my program that they're actually the right size. Or actually probably better what I'll do is I'll actually create some additional variables that are one bit in size. Okay, so the ones I need to change are auto mode, e stop, and pump run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these to change this to a one bit and then change this to one bit. Oh no, wrong one. E stop to one bit. There we go. And then change pump run to one bit. All right, and then I'm going to add a suffix on here to differentiate this IO name from the one I've already imported. And then I'm just going to highlight these again, hit copy, go back into Seascape. Go back to IO names and hit paste. It's going to ask me, and I say yes. So now we've got additional tags that are of the Boolean type, and those will be useful to us when we actually go in and use them in our program. So again, if we quickly go back to program, import tags, and view the scan list, everything still lines up nice and straight. But when we go into and our program and use the, the uh, tags in our program or the imported I.O. names into our, into our program, it makes it real easy to find the ones we want. So I can go to the View Edit Screens now and populate on these objects the tags or the I.O. names that I want. So for each of these bit type objects or bit type graphical objects, I just went ahead and assigned them all to T1 as a temporary measure. For each of these integer type tags, when I created the screen originally, I just mapped them all to R1 originally. That's just something that I do sometimes if I draw my screen ahead of the point at which I fill in the proper variables. So now I just need to go in and fill in the appropriate variables for each of these objects. So let's start with e-stop. And I can just go and pull it right from the list. So I'll, they're, they're in alphabetical order, all the tags that are in here. Okay, so there's e stop boolean, that's the one I want. Let's go to auto mode. All right, so same thing here, we can just find it from the list. Auto mode boolean, got it. Next we'll go to pump run, alphabetical order, pump run boolean. And then these, we'll just have the original names because the types all matched nicely. So this is the on set point. So scroll up to on set point. Then we have the off set point. And then finally we have tank level in feet. All right. So now we've populated on the screen here the variables or the IO names that have been mapped to the imported tags from the Rockwell. So now we'll just download this and away we go. All right, I've downloaded my program and now let's take a look at our demo on the bench. So here's the setup we have here. We have our handy dandy IO simulator, which we're using the switches for simulation and those are wired into the IO card here. All right, and then we also have a analog pot there that's wired into this 8-bit analog card in the last slot. So 8-bit resolution, surprisingly kind of low resolution, which is contributing to a little bit of the bounciness you see there in our water tank display. All right, so if we want to get this display going or get this demo going, Let's start with setting up an onset point and an offset point. So in auto mode, our pump will turn on at 100 and off at 50. 
And that data is being freely exchanged with the Rockwell right now, along with the water tank level, as you can see. So to operate our system, we need to make sure our e-stop signal is okay. That's wired into the six, sixth switch. You can see it turning on there. Next, we need to go into auto mode. That's wired into the fourth switch. And since we're in auto mode, now I can dial up the tank level, which I'm simulating with my milliamp pot. And then as I go above 100, we should turn on. And as I get back below 50, we should turn off again. So you can see everything is working as it should. We've got a free exchange of tag data between the OCS and the Rockwell CPU, and everything's working as we want. That's the setup approach if you're using register-based advanced ladder. What if you are using variable-based instead? In this short demo, I'm just gonna show you some of the differences if you're using variable-based advanced ladder instead of register-based ladder and you want to import tags from a Logix CPU. So I start out in my variable-based advanced ladder by creating an arrayed variable. So it's an integer type array. I went ahead and sized it at 500, just like you might use if you had a fairly sizable number of tags that you wanted to import. You know, in my demo here, I have six tags I'm importing, so this is way overkill. But it's a size you might use for a larger project. And then I went ahead and mapped this array starting at R1001. When you're dealing with communications, it's usually best to map your variables. And it's easy to do uh, right here in the program variable editor. Next, let's head to program, import tags from L5K file. We're gonna follow similar steps as before. Import device, find our L5K file set up our IP address. And once again, this name is too long for Seascape, so we're just gonna call it something shorter within 12 characters, not gonna change the port number. There we are, and we're gonna import the same tags that we did before. And then we'll get that done quickly. Now, of course, here we need to put a variable, not a register. So this is where we're going to select the first element in the array that we had previously created. And really, that's pretty much the main difference when it comes to importing the tags. It's just that you're going to select the first member of an array instead of a specific memory location. So just like in the register-based advanced ladder, I went ahead and added in names for all the variables that I imported locally for Seascape here. I put them in retain variables. So there's my original array, and then there's all the individual variables in the proper order and all mapped to the proper location. Okay, and you don't have to manually enter them from here. You can take advantage of the edit variables as text feature and use one of the available formats in your text editor, whether it's this IEC format or an XML format or CSV format to basically import using your text editor instead of just manually typing them in. So that's a demonstration of both register-based logic as well as variable-based logic for setting up Logic's Tag Exchange. All right, so let's wrap up our topic for today. We covered the fact that Logic's Tag Exchange is available in many OCS models. We covered that early in the session. We stated you must have access to the Logic's program, specifically an L5K file, in order to use this feature. You can map tags from your CPU in your Rockwell over to the OCS to specific OCS registers. And then there are a variety of ways you can use to uh, create the IO names or the variable names in Seascape for the corresponding variables that have been imported. So as we close today, I want to mention the fact that uh, we are here every Tuesday at two o'clock. 
Uh, and we're always standing by to answer your questions on every week's topic, whether we're fully live or whether we are showing or streaming live a pre-recorded video. Now, next week, we think we've got a good topic for you. Now, we have covered extensively on this channel using Seascape with variable-based advanced ladder as well as the traditional register-based advanced ladder. Where we haven't spent as much time, but we're changing that, is with using the IEC 61131 languages as your control languages within Seascape. Next week is the first of a four-part series where we're going to cover four of the most popular IEC languages available in Seascape if you use IEC style logic programming. Now, Ladder is a popular choice, of course, because Ladder is popular in industrial applications. Now, the Ladder that is used within the IEC package isn't exactly the same as Advanced Ladder. Uh, it follows a little bit more closely the PLC open standards for the IEC languages. That being said, it's a nice language and it gives you the ability, if you use IEC, to use multiple languages in your application. So we'll be covering Ladder in IEC next week, the first of four consecutive weeks covering popular IEC languages. As we close, I do want to remind you, if you haven't done so already, don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you choose notifications, you'll be notified every time we go live or every time that we post a new video. Okay, so that's it for this week. I look forward, hopefully, to seeing you next week. And until then, let's all get out there and do us some good.